we're trying to film something that is quite rare but incredibly dangerous to a firefighter, and it's called the backdraft. Backdraft initiated. Oh, it's like a dragon. Oh. Whoa! Probably one of the most terrifying videos that I've shot. Because it leads you to imagine, you know, what could happen in real life. Just like see smoke coming out of there one second. The yeah. next second, there's a huge explosion. We once again put the Phantom in an incredibly dangerous position. Whoa! Whew. We should really stop doing that. <laughs> but once again, it survived. We did have some marshmallows that seemed to be a bit <laughs> cooked, but the phantom was okay. One of the most interesting shots, I thought, was when all the marshmallows, they all got knocked just from the force of the explosion. So I it could easily blow you off your feet. It was, like, surprising. I feel like a lot of the time when we're doing an intro to a video, we're stood somewhere quite nice and comfortable, then we go on to do the experiment. That was the most stressful intro I've ever been a part of. Not gonna lie, in the intro, I was trying to be all casual and cool, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, trying to make a gag about how it was cold outside. I was like, I've got to get out of here. <laughs> it's so hot. It's quite cold outside, so I'm going to warm myself up a little bit. I think I'm warming up, actually. All right, okay. so let's head outside. Oh, pretty hot. <laughs> oh, God. I came out, and I was just like, holy cow. Yeah. I had the cameras roll right after we got out of there so we could talk about what it was like to be inside a burning room with a rollover on the ceiling. OK, so we just finished the uh, intro to part one. I mean, if, if you're going to learn to do an intro in, like, one take or two takes, <laughs> I feel like that's the best way to do it. We knelt down between takes just because it was getting so hot and stood back up to do the second take, but obviously you sort of retain a lot of the heat that you had in the first take. Yeah. And the end of the second take, I feel like the last 10 seconds of that just got so hot. The, the air I was breathing was hot. My shoulder, my left shoulder, boiling. And my shoulder is still warm. Like, it's still hot. Like, I yeah. felt your shoulder here. This, <laughs> this part is still warm. My actual, like, skin through all of those layers is still, like, whew, hot. That was an experience. All right, here's one of our wide shots. It sort of had the, the boomiest wide that we had. Um, and using your very technical marshmallow sticks, we can figure out the speed of this backdraft at its fastest. Yeah. So I think I'll start timing past this one to this one. one. Okay, that many. So there. Let's stop it there. So at our shooting frame rate of 1,000, it went from here to here in 145 frames. That's five feet. The speed was 35 feet per second. So that's 23 miles an hour, yeah. which is sort of Olympic sprinter <laughs> speed. You'd have to be literally an Olympic sprinter. It'd be a real dramatic scene running yeah. in front of a backdraft. You'd have to already be at full tilt going that way at this point to not get hit by that. And then it sort of slows down as it gets further along. I'd say that's the fastest point that we can measure on this. It's really busting out of there, though, still. So we've seen it in action, but to find out more about what causes a backdraft, we spoke to Fire Chief Ken, who's there. There he is, yeah. We're here with Chief Ken Bailey from Travis County Fire Rescue. Good to see you guys. Hello. That's a good handshake. That's a solid handshake. That's a actually. solid handshake, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, what exactly is a backdraft, and how does it work? So a backdraft is where all the contents are started on fire, and then all the oxygen is consumed in a sealed container. And what ends up happening is, is we reintroduce oxygen, we have a rapid explosion of the gases, which were the products of combustion. And how often would that happen in normal firefighting? You know, most people go a career without seeing it. So it's a very rare occurrence, but right. a very sudden and dangerous one. Exactly. I heard somewhere that you have less time to get out of a house fire now. So back when our parents were had furnishings in the house, it was probably made of cotton or wool, and those will only let off so much heat over a certain period of time. The heat release rate on those were different. And the products that we buy today, they're cheaper, they're styrofoam, and it's look at it as solid fuel. And so the heat release rate is much, much faster on that. It very quickly consumes the oxygen. If the home was sealed, and then the fire department shows up, they open the door, and we have that introduction of oxygen in that sealed compartment, it gives us the challenge of the potential backdraft. I was just blown away when we were in there doing our intro, just how hot you still feel through all the gear. I'm and, still uh, cool enough now. Yeah. <laughs> it was like half an hour ago. I'm like still warm. And I've got a beard, which I wouldn't have if I was a firefighter. Non-regulation. The seal on my mask was letting in hot air, too, so that was 
I've got to shave this off as we go back. <laughs> next, next time you come back, you should just shave like a strip for the gas mask. Yeah. So say I'm just a person in the house, my house has caught fire, called the fire department. Is there any state that I can leave my house that's safer from backdrafts, or shall I just get the hell out of there? Getting out of the house is the most important. We would much rather you burn your house down <laughs> and save your life than try to stay with it uh, or delay 911. By well, That's one of the problems we have is people will We'll think, hey, we can handle this situation, and then that delays a call to 911, and then when we get there, it's a much larger fire than it needed to be. So if you're in a room with all locked doors, you know, there's a fire door, and there's a window, and there's a fire, how should you get out? How's the best way to get out to get out safely? So if you're in an interior corridor, and you're trying to make it through the fire area, the area that's involved, uh, and you have the choice between that and a window, I choose the window before the other. All it takes is a couple of breaths of that carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide and some of the other products of combustion, and, and your chances are that you won't make it to the door. We tried to contact a lot of people to get this simulated, and you guys are one of the very few people who said that you'd be able to recreate a backdraft, and you actually did it. So we're extremely grateful that you could help us out and make this video with us. Yeah, thanks very much, Ken. That was uh, really Thank informative. You. It was our honor. Also we scary it. as well. Thanks so much. All right, back to you, Gavin, Dan. Thanks, us. Now, very few people will come into contact with a real full-size backdraft like that. Thank goodness. But there is a much smaller version of a backdraft that people might be familiar with. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go outside and do an experiment? All right. All right. You know, Dan, I'm really glad we filmed this in winter. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Good barbecue. Nice time for a barbie. Yeah. So using what we've learned, you think you can create a mini backdraft with this? I think so. All right. I'll set the scene. It's the summer. It's not raining. We've got a nice hot barbecue. It's been on for a while. Hot coals. We've got our chicken. It's going to be covered in oil, because that's how you cook chicken, isn't it? <laughs> if I just introduce the fuel, so this is like the wood in the back of the container, I'll just pop that on the thing. Oh, you can tell it's already hot. Yeah, it's already hot. Immediately then I close wet. this down. Shut the flames down, and then when I reintroduce the oxygen, it should pop out. Very See nice. That? That's great. It's just medium chicken. Medium chicken. Oh, you see all the uh, the smoke going in. Do you see that? Yeah, that, you see that it rushing around. That's the same pattern. It's a similar effect as like the smoke's kind of getting sucked back around. Yeah. That well, oxygen uh, just rushes in, and then boom. And then it just ignites all the the smoke, really. Yeah. A little mushroom cloud for a second there. Look at that. <laughs> it's like sucking all the smoke and fire out. <laughs> like a tabletop nuke. Not what you want to see on a barbecue, really. <laughs> Conditions are becoming good. Oh, yeah, you see all the oxygen rushing in and then yeah, allowing the fuel to reignite, burn again. It's funny how that fire had all gone out because it had been starved of oxygen. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really think about a fire that's gone out as being out, really. No. That's what's dangerous about it. So that was sort of a medium backdraft. This time I'm going to skip the chicken out and just <laughs> pretend I'm some sort of Muppet who's never used the barbecue before. <laughs> oh, it looks like it's going out. So I put a bunch of fuel on it, which is this oil here. You got a message for anyone watching at home? Uh, probably just don't do it. Like, kids, <laughs> just don't, don't do it. Don't try at home. Oh, oh it's gonna... I'll cover that up. It's going to be colossal. Are you nervous? Nah, I'll be all right. All right. So, when you're ready? Ready. Here we go. Whoa. Potentially delicious. Potentially. All right, this is some serious business. All right. Full. <laughs> Just an oil meal. Just eating some oil. Significantly bigger. I've just disappeared behind <laughs> a waft of pure fire there. Where have you gone? <laughs> Look at that, you're just dragging smoke. I wonder it if the prawns really are done. Because cool. <laughs> the lid is round, it's like a perfect ball of smoke and fire comes out. Yeah. Oh. Dangerously beautiful, that one. Yep. <laughs> Very it's like lingering on your head. <laughs> <laughs> That's your I've just singed my eyebrows face. Quite some eyebrows to singe as well. More fuel than in the oil. New profile pic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really enjoyed that episode. It was we got some good footage. It was very informative. Oh, totally, yeah. Also, don't try the experiment at home. It's uh, quite dangerous. That it is. Hopefully you enjoyed that episode. Feel free to subscribe to the Slow Mo Guys and make sure you check out other episodes from Planet Slow Mo.